right. Well, here we are. Uh, today we're starting Mailbag at noon, and we're starting the archive at the beginning of Mailbag instead of uh, a little bit early. There was a lot of fun going on here earlier, but it was, uh, you know, so, um, like an hour or two earlier, so we missed it. Um, but we had the tissue put out, and they all had a little bit of fun with that. Uh, as for the usual catch-up uh, news stuff, uh, first off, uh, last week's mailbag I've uploaded twice, and both times YouTube's uh, like, yeah, we're working on it, and they never do, which has happened to us before. Probably something wrong with the encoding just a little bit, so if I just re-encode it, uh, I'm sure that it will work fine, so I'm going to do that, uh, but I just I haven't had time. I, I you know, I've, This week has been a little nuts, and I don't have to get into all the details of that, but let's just say... Um, we had another kind of flood in the basement and then a potential uh, one that, that I, I got the salt before it happened. But there were a lot of emergencies this week, unfortunately. Uh, the good news is I'm feeling much better, uh, generally speaking. Um, you know, I, I, I can do stuff again. And then thank goodness that that's when everything fell apart because if it happened, you know, uh, like two weeks ago, it just would have been the worst. Uh, but it's pretty easy for me to manage all that this week. Um, and, uh, all the news, uh, you know, stuff I think I've mentioned before, but you may not have seen for various reasons. Um, we have all, all three of these boys are, uh, graduated, you know, they've got, they passed their final exams and, uh, they are ready to adopt. I just need to open the applications on the website, which is one of those things that's very high on my list of priorities, uh, right behind everything that's, uh, very higher. So, you know, it is what it is, um, but it, I'll, I'll get it done real soon because I don't want these kids to, to have to hang around here uh, when people want to bring them home. That's way more important. That's, that's definitely a high, high priority. So uh, we'll get that opened up right away. Um, and I've said it before, but I don't want to not say it when I'm talking about adoptions. I want to let everybody know I really do think that uh, little Spyglass here or Astro uh, over there, Astro, the, no, nope, Astro went that way. Anyway, uh, either Spyglass or Astro uh, probably should get adopted along with Trinket, who's upstairs right now because Maggie's out. So, uh, and the reason I say that, of course, is that um, uh, that they uh, they play, they play, they get along, they have fun. Uh, they're good friends. Trinket doesn't get along with everybody, um, but she loves to play with other cats. So I think that that's a real valuable thing for her. I, I'm not going to say it would be impossible to reproduce that, uh, you know, with somebody that already has a cat for her to play with, but it'd be very difficult. Uh, she she does not play with anybody except for these three kittens. So uh, I think she really sees them as more of her peers than uh, than other cats would be. So, you know, I, I just think it's a good idea, not a requirement, of course, but something that anybody that wants to adopt one of these kittens or trinkets should, should strongly consider. And of course, they love her too. Uh, Ocean, too, is going to need an adopter, and, uh, you know, she can go with one of her kittens, but she's now hit the, the point for sure where she's she's starting to try to cut them off a little bit. She's, she's let them nurse and, and bother her far longer than most moms would, so she's just a real good mom, but, uh, you know, she's also ready to, to just go on to whatever she's going to do next, you can tell. So, uh, you know, it, it never a wrong move, though, to adopt a mom cat with one of their kittens. That always works out, and I definitely would recommend it here, too, if you, uh, if you have the option. Um, then we have our new mom cat upstairs. Her name is Cahoots and we took her to the vet this week and we found out that, uh, with, through an x-ray that she's got at least five kittens going on in there. Could be more. Um, and, uh, I don't know when she's going to deliver, but I'm hoping it's, you know, at least a, a week or maybe even two from now uh, before she does. Of course, it could be tomorrow or today, you know, who knows any, any minute now. Um, and then... Oh, uh, and you probably have noticed that, that she's a little bit, um, she's got, you know, a little something going on that uh, might just be like an inner ear thing. Uh, maybe, you know, like maybe she had uh, sort of an infection or something a long time ago that still uh, now has, has affected the way that she's just going to be. You know, this is her life now, maybe. Or uh, who knows? Uh, it's something that we're, we're keeping an eye on and going. It doesn't seem to really bother her. But you'll notice that, that sometimes she... Um, it seems like she's not tracking things very well and definitely like you'll see her head is, is kind of tilted to the side most of the time. Uh, and that's fine. Like I said, it doesn't bother her. Uh, it doesn't bother me. So, so no need to let it bother you either. Um, it's, it's really not a big deal. And uh, like I said, we're, we're doing all we can. Uh, the vet's aware of it. We did initial exams already. And as we go back to the vet, we'll continue to sort of keep, uh, keep checking on it until we can figure out uh, if there's something to be done. Hi, Maggie. I was just talking about you. 
So I think that is literally all the news that we need to be concerned with. And uh, I'd like to get through this because as you know, quite a bit of stuff for me to get done too. And um, so we should, we should try to keep it rolling is what I'm saying. I guess let's just, let's keep it rolling. So uh, not a giant mailbag today. It was kind of cute when I went to go pick it up. Um, there was a, a new guy that answered the, the call door that I have to go to to pick up my stuff. And uh, he didn't quite know what he was doing, you know, or what, how to deal with, with the, the volume of stuff. He's like, so do you always, you know, get this much stuff? What do they do? And I said, oh, they just, you know, put it in a cart and I wheel it out. He said, all right. Uh, and then he walked off and you could tell he was, he, what, he got, I saw him get the wrong cart and I tried to kind of, you know, shout at him. I didn't think that one was going to work, but he didn't hear me. And he went to go get some help from one of the regulars. And then she walks up and she's like, oh, hey, Chris, would you sleep in today? <laughs> Which is. It's funny because I did, I guess, maybe you had to be there, but then it turns out this is not, you know, this is probably one of the smaller mailbags from our perspective. So, uh, you know, the, the new guy just didn't, didn't have the right perspective on the situation, I suppose. Uh, but I'm sure he'll get it together. Okay. Now, uh, let's do open it. I'm going to start with the big box first, just because that way, maybe we can start uh, right away getting things organized. Actually, there was a letter somewhere though. I know there was one piece of letter. Oh, it's right on top of that. Okay, we'll start there then. Hi, Maggie, you want to help? Do you want to help? What are you looking for? It says, attention, new mom cat. All right, good. So that's for Kahui. Oh, wow. This is a beautiful painting of two uh, ducks in a pond, of course. Um, and it says the original artwork for this card was created by Catherine, a patient of, uh, at Phoenix Children's Hospital. Wow. Uh, so I would assume that she's a child. Uh, and that is some amazing art for anybody, uh, for anybody of any age, really. Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ, I did rescue for 10 years. We had a cat with a head tilt who was misdiagnosed until x-rays uh, revealed a nasal polyp uh, that was removed surgically. Hope this helps your new mom cat. Oh, Anna, thank you. That is very nice of you to write us a letter to let us know that. I'll tell you, uh, like I said, um, and, and obviously you didn't know this when you wrote your card, probably hadn't even happened yet, but when we took her to the vet uh, and had her examined, uh, polyps was the, the vet's very first guess that, that that could be something, you know, polyps would be a thing. And she looked for polyps in the ear, uh, you know, using the, what do you call uh, otoscope or whatever? I'm not sure what you call it. Uh, she had a good look in there as, as best she could uh, and didn't see anything. But she sort of put a pin in that to say, all right, well, when she comes in for her spay, then we'll have her knocked out and we can look at anything we want. So uh, that's, that's, I think, really the plan. And we, uh, we do have our fingers crossed that that's what, exactly what it turns out to be. So yeah, the, good call on that one. And uh, hopefully that's, that's all that there is to it. And hopefully, you know, hopefully it's one of those circumstances where the polyps are still there and the vet finds them, pulls them out during the spay. And after that, you know, she goes back to normal. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case, but we'll see. So, uh, yeah, of course, right now we, we couldn't do that kind of thing. Um, I don't know if she could just nip it out if it happened to be in the outer ear, but if it's inner ear, nasal, you know, something like that, um, that's a surgery and you're not going to want to put a cat into surgery while she's still got her kid. So that, that wouldn't really have been an option now regardless, but definitely high on the list of things that we are considering. So thank you so much for writing in the beautiful card. I really appreciate that. And we are going to move right to this box then, which I think uh, you're starting to recognize the style of. This is clearly from the B&B &B sisters, Beatrice and Bernadette. And let's just see what they've sent this week. My goodness, so generous towards these kittens. I just love it. All right. Maggie's laying directly in front of the camera, but I don't think she's blocking anything. Of course, I didn't look to see whether you can see anything at all. We have a Halloween card here. It's got a cute little kitten vampire. It says Vampur, of course. Uh, where is my phone? Let's take a quick look here. Let's also uh, let's do this, do that. Okay, and the other. Hang on one sec. Make sure that this all gets seen. Yeah, no, okay, that's clearly working. And you got little uh, Maggie there in the front. Okay. Cool. All right. So hello, Mr. A, Dr. DJ, and all the cats and kittens at Kitten Academy. B&B &B sisters here. Last time we kind of overdid it with the toys, and this time we overdid it with the blankets. Since Halloween is around the corner, three of the blankets are Halloween themed, which is a favorite holiday for one of us. 
Another blanket has an ocean foam theme, which we thought looked cool. The last blanket has a galaxy space theme for the next time you decide to do a space theme. As usual, we have included food and toys. Everything, of course, is to be used as you see fit. Beatrice and Bernadette, thank you again so very much. Uh, so yes, uh, great blankets, by the way, and these things are wonderfully soft and uh, you can just never have too many throw blankets. These are exactly the kind of blankets too that we try to keep around and then um, send one home, you know, with the kittens so they have something that kind of smells like us and, and, and also is soft and wonderful for a little while. So my point being that, yeah, we do we do go through them um, and uh, that's that's wonderful. But then that, you know, sometimes they get worn out or, or irrecoverably uh, damaged by a cat, I guess, you know, that can happen. Anyway, this is really cute. It's a whole series of little black cats sitting on little crescent moons with a, the a Halloween theme. Like this one's got a little spider. Actually, that might be the only thing uh, besides the moon and the stars being orange and black uh, that, that really says Halloween, but it's still so pretty and soft and wonderful. The colors are great. Uh, some of the cats have kind of Halloween-y expressions. One of them is kind of making a, like a, like a, a standing up, uh, you know, kind of thing. All right, okay, enough of that. I've described it. You get the idea. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. This one is... Hmm. Let's see. Oh, oh, wow. Very artistic, um, sort of a, oh, it's a witch cat. I see. Oh, there we go. It's wearing a little witch's hat. Uh, actually, it's wearing a giant witch's hat. Okay. And it's a skinny little artistic kitty black with green eyes set on a backdrop of stars. Uh, beautiful. Wow. These are some great colors, too. All of it. Uh, the orange and gray, uh, the Halloween blanket with the orange and gray, wonderful colors, especially. So that's, uh, that's fantastic. Then you have this sort of ocean sea foam theme one that you said, perfect. Perfect size for fitting in the, like a, a crate or a, uh, one of these cages that we use very often, or maybe in the mom cat's box that I should get set up for her before she decides to deliver. And another blanket, here we go. This must be the space themed one that you mentioned. Ooh. Oh, wow, that's very cool. That's, um, uh, gosh, what do you call, um, uh, you know, the word that's coming to mind is like quasar, but I don't think that's it, uh, where it's got the, the sort of blasting out uh, radiation in the little cone shape from either end. Uh, I, can't, I can't think this morning, or, uh, you know, I say this morning, I'm being very generous to myself. Um, so uh, that beeping, I think, was the, the water, uh, DJ's water heater. Um, anyway, that's very pretty. Thank you so much. Uh, just completely wonderful stuff. Then, as you mentioned, we have the Fancy Feast Chicken Feast Classic Pate. Yes, we are trying to uh, feed the kids a little more dry food. I mean, a little more than we did, which was none. But their staple food uh, diet is still this. This is still what they get almost uh, all the time, almost every meal. Uh, and the reason that we're using dry food now and then is uh, just to sort of test my theory that um, the, the dry food is going to help their teeth uh, a little because it just it feels like and it could I mean I could could just be a mistaken impression in the first place I don't know but it feels like especially our faculty um, uh, need a lot more dental cleanings than uh, than most kitties might um, I noticed that so many of the cats that come in even the older ones come in with nice teeth uh, and surely you know haven't been kept up on their dental work the way that ours are um, so I wonder if a, like a strictly wet food diet may not be doing them all the favors. Uh, but again, that's just that's idle speculation and, and may not even be, uh, you know, based on a, a reality in the first place. I don't know. But it doesn't hurt to try things out. And boy, do they love the dry food. It's like a bowl of treats to them. You know, they're just like, oh, a bowl of treats. So you got to take it easy on it. But there you go. So this is great. Uh, like I said, still still the vast majority of the food we go through. And that's great. Uh, let's see, you've sent some fun toys. This is a Discman and headphone toy set. It's retro plush CD player cat toy, it says. Very cute and on theme. This one is a, a cat toy that is a scale, scale and message bubble cat toy, it says, because there's a scale and uh, the weight just reads help. And then uh, there's a thought bubble that says the scale is a liar. Those could go together for a uh, very cute for like a little photograph or something. That's adorable. I love it. Uh, oh, we have a cassette tape. Oh my goodness. I haven't seen this one. I haven't seen this one. I have seen this one. So uh, that's fun. 
Um, but uh, this is the Retro Plush Cassette Kicker Cat Toy. It's much smaller, but I love it. I love the teal and gray color too. That's wonderful. And uh, that goes great with this. And we've still got the boom box. Actually, I'm not positive that we have the boom box itself, but we do have the one that is the like the giant cassette tape scratcher for sure. I just saw it. Um, and then the video game console and all the stuff that kind of goes with that sort of tech, retro tech theme. Uh, so uh, these, these will be great for that, if nothing else. But I love them. Then we have a bag of mouse cat toys. All right. Oh, got some nice brown in there, too. Very rare, uh, just like brown kitties. Uh, we've got some Kong Kickeroo here, a nice little kitten kicker. Whoa. You're a kitten kicker, aren't you? Yeah, she kicks kittens. Uh, that's, okay, uh, we've got the Full Harvest plush cat toy with catnip. Now that's uh, very seasonal and Halloweeny. One is a, a pumpkin, and then we got these gourds. Oh, a gourd and a, uh, a corn, a little dried out corn. Uh, very cool. Wow. I miss corn. I guess being out of the Midwest, you don't, you know, you, all of a sudden you realize like, wait a minute, wait just a minute. Uh, oh, we got Meowple syrup. That's very cute. It's a Meowple season cat toy set. That's, that's a kind of stretching the pun a little bit, but you know, it works. I'll go with it. I like it. So uh, that's Canadian, I guess. And then we have another set from the same folks, Maggie. This is his room. Now you see what I'm talking about? You are a cat kicker. Um, we have the Postronaut cat toy set that has a rocket and a star. And I just, I love these. There's another set that comes, uh, in a grid. It's not the same company, of course, in a grid with these nine toys in it. It's got like the sun and a little alien and a spaceship. Uh, and, uh, like it's got a very similar thing, but these are different and cuter. And this one's got a lot more embroidery on it. It's very nice. And I love the little feathers coming out of the rocket. Perfect for the rocket, uh, theme. And then finally, at the bottom, a very Halloween blanket that's still all packed up, but I can tell how soft it is. It's got black cats. It's got words that say boo. Uh, and uh, some cats that are kind of arched here. That maybe is the word I was looking for before, but not quite. Uh, I still can't think of the word I was looking for before. It doesn't matter. It's wonderful. It's all wonderful. Thank you so much. So, uh, and now that that's cleared, I'm going to put the Halloween things over here just because uh, I think there's going to be more of that. And also, I kind of want to keep it at hand because any day now, it's going to be time to start putting that out by my clock. Uh, it is still September, though. And I know people keep pushing these holidays, uh, you know, earlier and earlier. But can, can you really do Halloween in September? I don't know. Uh, anyway, I do love Halloween, though. There's so many fun things that you can do with it. And uh, playing dress up was always you know, fun. It's fun to have an excuse. Don't expect anything like what I did last year. I don't know how I had that kind of uh, uh, vision <laughs> or uh, effort, uh, you know, last year. Um, but um, yeah, in fact, this year I haven't, I haven't planned a thing and I, I probably won't if, if I'm honest. We'll, we'll see. Of course, I do still have uh, some of the stuff from last year, but then uh, last year required me to, to spend uh, like a whole month growing out a beard. I got a very scraggly beard. It doesn't grow in very well. And uh, I, I would, that's, uh, <laughs> anyway. All right. Oh, this is Halloween. This has got to go with the Halloween. Okay. That's good. All right. Okay. I think we got it uh, for now. Good. And this can go here. That scale's so funny. I love it. All right. I pulled this out, uh, but I just now I grabbed this. So here's what we're going to do first. This is, oh, thank you, B&B Sisters, by the way. All right. This is a, apparently a little dropship from Cats Love You, spelled E-W-E. That's a cute pun, too. And it's got a little cat stamp on their uh, shipping thing. So, that, so you can tell that they took an extra minute to, to make the outside something special. That's cute. Ooh, wow. Chicken. Look at that chicken. This must be for Ocean because, uh, yeah, I get the joke. But let's see. Oh, this is a very cute uh, letterhead that they've got, and it says, and it's a, written as a whole card, too. This is so cute. Oh, so that's adorable. And it says, to Ocean, thank you for all the laughs and for raising your kittens so well. Please enjoy your own chimkins that you don't have to steal. From Katsu. Oh, Katsu, thank you so much. That's cute, and I knew exactly what it was for the minute I saw it. And uh, this is a felted... Uh, chicken leg. You can even see it's got a little white bit at the end to be the bone um, and then 
uh, felted fried chicken leg, I should say. And then it's got three little felted balls as a bonus to come with it. And it's uh, it's it's very, like, this has some weight to it, some heft. Like, they, they felted it. They really uh, didn't skimp on the felting. It's solid. So that should probably last her a long time, uh, especially if it's got the catnip in it. She is going to love it. So I'm going to bet your letter is so cute. Uh, your sentiment is so cute. And the, the letter, I guess, that probably the, this uh, cats love you, E-W-E-U, um, put on it is uh, adorable. So thank you for that. I'm going to label it right on the outside for Ocean. And then we can put it all together in her endowments. Just write Ocean right here. Ocean. That's very cute. Of course, that's making a reference to the time that I had left uh, a sandwich, a bow sandwich, one of those little uh, steam bun sandwiches with some piece of fried chicken in it uh, uh, on the counter. And I think it was closed, but not closed enough. So she stole the chicken out of the middle of the sandwich and brought it down here to this um, little gray box behind me and, and hid in there and ate the entire thing. Uh, and uh, by the time I found out, it was too late too late good stuff too it was very good oh my goodness there's a place here that makes uh those and makes pho and it's oh it's so wonderful i've tried pho from so many places and it's hard to get one that's just awesome oh, man, now i'm hungry for that okay uh this is from janice c i saw before i covered it up so i'm guessing this is the noodle stick or and it says on the outside ms trinket uh, not in the usual mailer, but then the usual mailer is for sending a whole bunch, and this is just for trinkets. So I get it. So nice of you to, to think of her and to send one just for her Oop, before she goes home. There we go. Oh, look at that. And you've included a note right here. Looks like a little nose itchy there. All right. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Ari. We want everybody to see you on top of the boxes. He's always got to get on the boxes. This says, many bunches of thanks. And it is made uh, up like a cereal box called many bunches of thanks. That's cute. Super grateful for you. Now with extra appreciation. Uh, it says, seriously, you are the best. Now that's a good pun. After watching Trinket playing with and munching the grass you brought in before Mailbag, I finally knew what color noodle stick she should have. Thanks for making sure she can remain a kitten as long as she wants. Aw, thank you, love, Janice. Thank you, Janice C. Uh, that is just wonderful. What a sweet sentiment, too. Um, so she gets a green noodle stick. And yes, I imagine uh, you always match it to sort of the collar colors, but this class hasn't needed uh, uh, collars. Pardon me. My nose is very itchy. Um, that is so sweet. All right. Uh, this, this, let's see, uh, I probably don't need to put it back in there, but I do need to make sure that I know where it's going to go. So, drink it. so, uh, one of the things that happened this week that was so time consuming was I ate a clock. Uh, that's a joke stolen from the last of us. So, um, no, the, one of the things that happened was, uh, um, our septic system started to get a little backed up and uh, thank goodness I, I just happened to be in the position to notice it outside before it came inside uh, which would be what happened next uh, which uh, oof. Uh, so um, I guess why did I bring that up I don't know exactly why I brought it up I, I feel like I had something more clever to say about it than the fact that uh, when it does back up the the it backs up directly to where I normally sort the endowments um, or, you know, has in the past uh, long ago before I thought we had the problem solved. The whole point being, I spent a lot of time uh, downstairs moving endowments back and forth to, in an effort to prevent the flood from reaching them, uh, which never happened. So thank goodness there was no flood in the end. Uh, very exciting week, though. All right. Uh, I don't really have a spot for trinket stuff yet, so I'm just going to set that there for a minute and we will... We'll get to uh, that in, the, in due time. All right, let's see. What else we got? Oh, that's for Ocean already. So that's, I'll put it right next to Trink stuff, and we'll call it stuff to go downstairs to the endowments. Good. Oh, fleet Oakley. And this says, Kitten Academy Ocean and the Sailing Kits from Lisa for Kittens. All right, Lisa, thank you. Wow, so generous, too. Uh, ooh, oh, very generous. What is all this? It looks like, it looks like, oh, it looks like calendars. Look at that. 
wall calendar for calipers and neuters, for spyglasses and neuters, for oceans and neuters. That's great. That's so nice of you. And the wall calendars, I recognize the art style now. And I learned something new about this uh, that makes so much sense. I, I think this week I learned. So these are the, uh, uh, what's his name, Bill Kleban, uh, the artist that you would recognize. All the packages that we get from Lisa G have uh, little stickers and decorations that are his art style. And he does all these like fat tabbies that are doing all kinds of various activities. And I learned from uh, a mailbag last year or the year before that he is an artist that is known uh, for being a Hawaiian artist who lives in Hawaii. Maggie, what? You just walk around and hiss at kittens for no reason? Anyway, I, I found uh, that he's known for being a Hawaiian artist. Um, someone sent, you know, the T-shirts and the little toy that's still hanging in the central bathroom upstairs, I think, that's, that looks exactly like one of his cats, except in real life. Uh, and uh, the bag and some other fun stuff. And the point being, so I had him in my head as this guy is a Hawaiian artist. And then this week I learned he's not. Uh, he, he does operate or has a store or something and lives now in Hawaii. But originally, uh, I'm told, from Connecticut. So uh, really, uh, right, right here, a uh, local artist is what I'm going to say. No, I think that's, I'm really stretching the term <laughs> local artist for that. So um, I would like to say Ocean's Kits on this, but I just got rid of your bag. So I'm just going to put it with Ocean stuff for now. And the fact that there are four of them will make it obvious to me what to do with them. These are very cute little cat calendars, uh, a very cute size too. You know, his art style, this this particular art style, that's another thing I learned is that um, I learned that he has gone through quite a number of styles and been known for uh, various different kinds of art throughout his life. Uh, I think he even did the art for uh, like Playboy or something for a while. So not at all what you would expect. Uh, and again, none of that is, uh, you know, I'm just going off of what I've been told. So you can look him up on Wikipedia if you really want to know all that. Uh, what was I going to say about his style? I was going to say, oh, it reminds me, uh, the, these cats anyway, they really look like uh, Bill Larson had after he stopped doing the far side and started doing cats. because it, it really looks like that. Um, but without the same, you know, uh, in unimitable humor. Is that a word? Inimitable. Un? In? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, this says Kitten Academy Spyglass a Duders right on it. So let's see what that's all about. <laughs> Ooh, and it's in a gift bag. Ooh, so nice. Oh, from Lisa Four Kittens. I wanted this. Oh, you just, I just saw a message about this this morning uh, pop up on my phone. I wanted this for Spyglasses and Duders ever since he got his name. I finally found one. I hope it gets there in time and they'll enjoy it from Lisa Four Kittens. Well, it did. And uh, you told me what it is, but let's take a look. What you said is that it is, uh, you had a word for it though that I don't, I don't remember what the word was. Uh, here we go. Oh, it's so pretty. The rainbow colors and it's made out of a, it seems to be a, like a metal, like a brass. So that's uh, extra nice. I'm trying to avoid saying fancy um, because I know I have been uh, saying that too much. All right, let's see here. But it is fancy. I love the fact that it is a rainbow and it's made out of, you know, this lasting material. But it is a kaleidoscope, but it's a little different than your regular kaleidoscope because you look through it and uh, therefore you can like point it at your cat or you can point it at spyglass. So it's like a spyglass combined with a kaleidoscope. Wow, that is noisy. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid scratching this beautiful finish with the knife, which I think I have managed to, uh, to avoid, I mean. So this is so cute. It says it is a marble scope, a shilling, S-C-H-Y-L-L-I-N-G. Marble scope is what they call it. Uh, that's not what Lisa called it, but um, it's very cute. It, has, it does have a big glass marble in the end, and then it's got like a, a brass um, cylinder that's got an enameled rainbow on it. It's beautiful. And then in the end, you can look through it. Oh, and uh, yeah, it's exactly what it is. It's a kaleidoscope. But instead of being filled with its own thing, you just pointed at whatever you want to see a whole bunch of. Like the wrong end of Ari. Hey, buddy. Wow, that's very fun. All right, that's cool. 
Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun for the adopters. So I don't think I need to wrap it back up in all the bubble wrap, but we'll use this tissue paper to make, keep it looking uh, fancy. All right. And right back in here. So sweet. Uh, what a great thought, too. Yeah, uh, I actually, I have a, uh, like a real spyglass that is beautiful that was sent um, to celebrate our move uh, uh, before we even knew where we were moving, but it's sort of part of a voyage theme uh, gift basket that we got. And I won't embarrass anybody by saying who sent it, but it's it's always been very special to me. So I actually had it out just the other day and took some pictures of it, but uh, you know, I can't. And so, uh, on top of that, it came in a, this ornate, just beautiful it, a wooden box inlaid with a metal anchor and then all polished nice. Oh, it's so beautiful. So uh, yeah, really on theme for this class, but too nice for me to just give away on account of the fact that we happen to name a cat Spyglass. Way too nice for that. Uh, all right, so this is this is beautiful, and um, I do know it's for Spyglass, and I just I guess it's uh, I guess that right there. Actually, maybe we can start putting the, at least ocean stuff right here into that box. That's the perfect idea. There we go. Good. All three of the kittens are now piled in this rocket behind me, and I think if I just well, move things over a little bit, maybe you can see them in there. Let me get this stuff out of the way. They have been running around rampaging all morning, so it's no surprise that they aren't going to make it through mailbag without a nap. Now, honestly, I feel the same way. And I wasn't even rampaging. I did sleep in today. That was my plan was to sleep in. That's why mailbag started a little bit late. And... Uh, I uh, didn't sleep in as much as I wanted, but I made it to 8 o'clock. I was, you know, planning more like 9, 10, but uh, 8, 10. Uh, I must have just, like, kicked that knife away somewhere. Oh, this one I can open. Oh, there it is. This says Kitten Academy. All right, well, that's it. <clears throat> Hopefully there's a note. Otherwise, we'll have to put in a call to J. Walter Weatherman. Teach somebody a lesson. Uh, welcome to the Academy, new mom. I hope you like these sweet blankets for your birthing box. I hope you do too. These are sweet, uh, literally sweet. This covered in cakes and custards and cupcakes and uh, all kinds of sweets. Oh, uh, chocolate covered strawberries. Oh man, now I'm drooling. Oh, no, another one with maca macaroons. That's what you call those little cookies, the little colorful cookies, right? I had those, I think it was one of the adopters brought us a box of those. And I don't, I'm sorry, now I don't remember which adopter it was. Um, uh, a couple of classes ago, though, I think, brought us a box of uh, beautiful, colorful macaroons. Uh, ma macaroons, right? Macarons? I don't know. I don't know what you call them. All I know is that they were not what I was expecting at all. Um, I know, you know, they make them with pate choux, which is, uh, you know, a, a special kind of uh, dough made out of roux. Uh, it's all very... Uh, you know, a lot of, you gotta be, I guess, really good to make them, but I've only ever seen them like on TV. So I was like, I don't get it. What's so special? You know, they just kind of look like your typical sandwich cookie. Uh, I don't get it. Is it, is it really any different than like a brightly colored Oreo that's kind of puffy because you can't make it in a press? Uh, and the answer is yes, it's very different. Um, that they are um, amazing, like delicate, and they've got like a crust on the outside that's, that you kind of got a crunch to it. And then on the inside, they just melt. Uh, it's, it's really, they're amazing. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, lots of sweets though was the point. And, uh, yeah, that's perfect for, I got to get her box up into her room. I have so many things like I gotta, uh, and I will, I gotta, uh, I will take care of this stuff. So, all right. Oh, look, oh, we have a literal mailbag here from Hell's Dells. Look at that. It says mail. Oh, uh, I got to show you here, but I accidentally missed one of the addresses. So I'm going to hold my thumb over it. Uh, it, it literally says uh, mail bag because it's an actual mail bag. Uh, we don't see that too often, surprisingly. Okay. And there is a note. Good job. From Hell's Dells, it says, Hi, Chris. Seasonal gifts for the Academy. Love, Helen. Hell's Dells. Oh, well, thank you. And your letterhead has this cute little blue eyed kitty looking into a uh, uh, fish. Bowl, I guess, although it's not clear that it's a fish bowl. It could be one of those bowls that just has the flowers floating in it. I don't know what you call that. You see it all the time in India with like a big lotus in the middle and then some other flowers floating around the sides. Um, there's got to be a word for it, but I don't know the word. 
Oh, seasonal doesn't mean Halloween. Seasonal means Christmas. I think DJ also was talking about scheduling our Christmas tree trimming for this year. I said, you know, you don't have to do that. I, I know neither of us has any energy. She has been so run down at work, and uh, I have been so run down uh, for other reasons. Uh, I'm like, neither of us has any energy. You know, it's, I know it's been a traditional, but you don't you don't have to keep it up just to, for the sake of keeping it up. Uh, but she said she really wants to do it, so I expect if she didn't already schedule it, that she will um, as soon as, as uh, she does. So anyway, uh, we've got little catnip Christmas. Uh, we got this one's got a little candy cane on it. This one's got little Santas on it. This one has a Christmas coconut on it. It's even labeled, so I wouldn't be confused at all about what it is. It says Christmas coconut, the uh, the original Christmas coconut, by the way, right right there in our little cabinet of wonderful things. Uh, that's funny. Those of you who don't know, uh, it was, I think, the first Christmas, the first Kitten Academy year uh, Christmas, someone sent us a Christmas pudding on a stick, which is what's right over there to play with the cats. But not a real pudding, of course, like a catnip, uh, you know, cat toy uh, Christmas. Uh, I didn't, I, I'm, I'm American and uh, typically uneducated, I think. <laughs> Uh, no idea. I'm like, I don't know what this is, some kind of coconut, you know, so it's just, it's lived forever as the uh, Christmas coconut. So, yeah, that's a tradition. Okay, this says all catnip. Ooh, they're catnip Santas, Christmas trees, gingerbread cookie, a uh, little reindeer, and uh, oh, a bundled up little penguin. Perfect for Christmas. All right, we'll put those right back in there. I'm thinking those are probably, I think DJ's going to do it the way she's done it the last few years. It's been like sort of the weekend of Halloween is when she decorates for Christmas. Uh, yeah, that's like two whole months early, but that is actually pushing it back from what I think she would do. So, so uh, very cute. Thank you. And then some little more uh, Christmassy stuff. We've got Christmassy stuff. That's cute. Uh, I saw this and thought of you. Tree decoration. It's a little kitty wearing a sweater. A little fat kitty wearing a sweater. He's adorable. This is a Christmas themed uh, crinkle bag or uh, yeah, I think crinkle bag for the kittens to climb into. All right. And uh, finally, I think we've got window stickers, stickers in general, Ooh. Uh, Christmas stickers. And uh, it does say window clings. Perfect. I've been wanting to decorate all the front windows. And someone, uh, maybe you sent a bunch of these for Christmas last year, the year before. Anyway, I know I dug them out and then they didn't get put up but, uh, this year for sure. These are super cute. Maybe that's what I can do while DJ's decorating the tree because I find that exhausting. Um, so uh, these are great. That's a whole bunch of Christmas. Thank you so much for helping us decorate this year. And I, like I said, I know DJ is excited about it, even though I told her she doesn't have to do it. She's like, no, this is what I want to do. So uh, it will. There, there's definitely going to be a Christmas thing, uh, as always. All right, so now we have a Christmas pile. We have a Halloween pile. We have a new mom cat. We have endowments for the kids. We've got trinket behind that. And we have stuff for us all the way back there. That is a lot of things. We're not quite done, though. Uh, ooh, heavy. Uh, this is super heavy for morning sunrise. I think that means uh, we can guess what's in it, but let's find out. Morning sunrise. Yes. Exactly what we expect. There we go. Uh, chicken feast. Classic pate. Exactly the right thing. There's two more right there, so I'm just going to slide this on over. Whoop. There we go. And that will get uh, put into the kitchen and immediately consumed uh, by the kittens. Hopefully not just by me. I do need some breakfast after this. Now, this is so light, I thought maybe it was already open, but it's not. It's super light. Oh, and I know exactly what's in here. It's from G, a girl, it says. So, G, a girl, Georgia girl, has sent us, I predict, a banana. Ooh, in a gift bag. Well, then it's a mystery. Uh, enjoy your gift for the new adorable mom cat from G, a girl. Aw, thank you. For our new mom cat, Cahoots is her name. Cahoots with a C. And it is a banana. Yes, perfect. I actually uh, just opened a banana from like sort of our stash for her. So we're going to say that that's the one that you sent. Uh, I mean, it was. I'm sure that that banana was sent by you. Um, and, uh, she was playing with it this morning. She's again, this might be kind of due to the fact that she has some trouble tracking things. Um, but she doesn't seem to play too much unless things are moving. So, so she, she you got to interact with her to get her to play more often than not. 
I have seen her get in there and kind of bite on the catnip pillows and stuff. So, I'm, you know, it's not a hard and fast rule, but uh, when things are moving around, she gets a lot more excited. So um, I was waving this around in, in her room this morning. And uh, yeah, she was loving it. We were playing a little bit of a game where you hide it behind something, you know, with the cardboard scratcher in her room. And she was thrilled. Like you can just tell when she gets all excited. Um, I think though that I was describing the way that she acts to DJ as having a different language than most cats. I think we see that sometimes with, with various mom cats that come in. Uh, some of them have a little bit of a different um, accent than, than regular cats. You know, like some of them, uh, well, like Trinket, for for example, Trinket goes uh, straight to growl. Um, you know, she doesn't go through a little warning hiss um, where most cats, you know, when they're like back off, they start with the hiss. Uh, Trinket starts with a growl and she'll bring up that growl for, for anything. Um, so uh, I think that um, our new mom cat, Cahoots, does this, except hers is more about her body language, which I think I think you would expect considering what she's got going on. But it's very difficult to tell so far because I haven't quite learned how she speaks. It's very difficult to tell when she's actually agitated by something versus when uh, she's really enjoying it. But but the way that she, you know, sort of presents herself makes it look like she's agitated or you would think, oh, that's that's an agitated cat. But I think what she really has is just a little bit of a different dialect. Um, and uh I don't know how much of this you can see on the camera. I know that, that uh, I've even gotten some, some uh, letters from people that are concerned, you know, like, oh, you know, uh, maybe handle her a little bit less. Uh, but that, that's not the case. And the, the way I know that that's not the case, first off, is how happy she is to see me when I go in and how we're working on, on getting her to be good friends with me. But I think more importantly, uh, the reason I know that's not the case is how much purring she does. She, she loves to purr and she'll just start right up when she sees me. She'll say, uh, you know, she'll just start start in with the purr. And in the meantime, her tail's going and, and she, she's, you know, like looking a little around like, you know, she's with any other cat. The, the body language would be telling you this is an angry cat that's that's nervous and wants you to go away. Um, but the purring is like, OK, she's you know, this is just sort of the way that she works. So it's, it's taken some time and I, I still haven't quite got her figured out and she hasn't got me figured out. But I'll tell you another thing about her that I really like is there's been a couple times where uh, out of agitation um, and the fact that I'm, I'm being a little too forward with her, you know, because I try to push their boundaries a little bit, but not too far. Uh, so I'm being a little forward with her and she's just chomped on me like, like, and I think, you know, she does it like, like Loganberry does it as a play thing. Like he'll just, he'll chomp on me. Uh, when he's playing or when you get his belly uh, and it, he doesn't want to hurt you. Um, and you can, I think you can tell she doesn't want to hurt anybody either, but she does it much harder than Loganberry. So it can be startling. And I'm like, whoa, well, that's not, I mean, like, that's a bite, except it's it's not. If, when a cat wants to bite you, you get bit. Uh, so she's not trying to bite me, but she's like a play chomp that just goes a little too far. So immediately I correct her with that. I, you know, I, I make a noise like, ah, you know, and I say I, I, very loudly, um, and she responds to that. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything except make the noise. And she's like, Whoa, I didn't mean it. You know? And, uh, that is, I think a very good sign of a cat that wants to, to do the right thing. You know, she's just, again, she's, she's not quite on the same page yet. So she'll get there though. Well, we'll get her sorted out and she's, she's going to be wonderful. You can tell what a sweetheart she is and how much she cares uh, to be with somebody and to be, you know, sort of a, a lovey dovey cat. It's just difficult for her. I think there's probably a lot of us that can relate to that, uh, you know, wanting to, to, to be affectionate with a new person, but also needing some time to get that, that comfort and, uh, and sort of learning, you know, the differences between uh, what you expect in that and what they expect in that. So, uh, so it's fun. I, I really enjoy actually that part of trying to, um, you know, that, that part of what we do at Kitten Academy. Uh, I enjoy it, but you know, some people, all they do is like bring in fear. She's not feral cat. All people do those bring in feral cats, which is that same sort of problem, like times a thousand. Uh, and that's, that's too much. I couldn't do that. But on this level, uh, you know, I, I just want to find. So uh, I enjoy sort of learning how different cats act in the just, just in anything in life. Uh, we, we call it, it's a computer programming term, I think. 
uh, edge cases are the things that are outside of the norm in a way that that makes you uh, reevaluate your rules about what things are. You know, um, something that that uh, you know you thought you had this 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 model that that explained how everything works, and then something comes up, and you're like, that doesn't fit in, or it's all the way out at the edge of what you thought. You know, um, uh, those are the things that can really help you uh, illuminate um, and grow as somebody that. I think I put that in there like, that's trash, but that's not trash. I don't know why that bag ended up in there. Uh, okay. Anyway, yeah, so uh, my point is that I'm having a lot of fun with her, even though I think, uh, rightly, that some people, you know, are, are concerned about that. Of course you are. You would be, and you should be um, concerned about it, because uh, it's, it's different than what you expect. So, oh, this is cute. I was, that's so cute. All right. Dear Mr. A, this is so sweet. Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ, since I saw your happiness when you saw these containers that I had gifted to Trinket, here's a set for you. Aw, for both me and DJ. Definitely use them while Ocean is still there <laughs> to keep my chicken locked up. Uh, so, yeah, it's another set of the uh, not Tupperware Tupperware. It's Box Cave and uh, solid stuff, and it looks like it's got little rubber seals and everything, four hinge lock system, that is some nice stuff. From Joe and her cat, ha Halfers, Halfer Halfers. I, I saw something about how to pronounce Halfers, and I know I'm still not doing it right because I saw it and then it just right out of my brain again. That's the way things are as you get older. Um, you can try to learn all kinds of new things, but without some serious focused effort. Whew. I keep saying older. I don't know if it's age or if it's other things, but uh, but that's uh, you know it is what it is. Thank you so much, by the way, Joe. Uh, that's so sweet of you. I, that, I'm just going to slide this right back here because that's where it's going to go. That is really thoughtful. You, you didn't have to do that. I felt so bad. Um, I, I was yeah. Anyway, that's it's very sweet of you. Okay. All right. There's one more box to open. I think just one more. And uh, as always. Ari has claimed it as his territory. So let me set this stuff over here. And Ari, buddy. Ari? Sorry, Ari. I need that box, pal. You know what I mean? Let me take this one. He's always on the boxes. And if I take one, then if there's another one, he'll just move to the next until, you know, he's always there for sitting on the last box by the time we get to it. Because that's an Ari for you. I wanted you guys to see those kittens in the rockets. So let me push all the Christmas stuff back there just a little bit. And this is for the new mom cat, which is, uh, no, he's just these two things for her, okay? All right, Ari, my turn, pal. Come here. Come here. You can sit with my lap, though. You want to try that? Here you go. Here you go, buddy. Uh, speaking of different cat dialects. <laughs> Ari's one of those cats, when he gets happy, he just starts drooling so much. Oh, my goodness. Okay. This says it is from Cat Lover Care of Kitten Academy, and it is addressed to Mr. A and Dr. DJ, and it says, open this side, right here on this side, so that's helpful. Unambiguous. I like that. Ooh. All right, well, you sent me a local paper to read, but you sent it as a puzzle that I'm going to have to assemble. Like that. That's, uh, that'll help keep me busy. Uh -huh. That's a joke, by the way. Uh, we have the knife guard under that. Okay. You must think I have a very big knife. <laughs> That's not a knife. Uh, okay, then we have... Uh, ooh, wow, what a cool... Okay, this is another Halloween blanket. This looks like a full-size like bed blanket. Oh, wait, no, I think it's... I get it. No, I don't get it. Okay, but it's labeled. It is just one big blanket, 60 by 80 inches. That's almost big enough for like a king-size bed. Uh, not quite, but almost. Uh, anyway, Astrolabe Caliper Spyglass. I do see that. They're all kind of represented. Look at that. Oh, Astrolabe's wearing a pirate costume. Spyglass is wearing a little witch's hat. And Caliper is wearing, oh, another pirate costume. Okay. I see that's very cute, though, how they're represented. There's also mummy cats on the blanket and little pieces of candy and Halloween baskets. I see they're out trick-or-treating. And then we have The Note. Uh, again, very unambiguous, just the way we like it. Perfect. All right. 
Oh, this is cute. It's a, it's a little drawing of a cat with a pumpkin in a field and the moon, and he's wearing a, a Halloween hat. And it says, moon bright above you, leaves crisp beneath you, good treats ahead of you, love all around you. Hope your Halloween is just like that. That's cute. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. A and Dr. DJ, happy Halloween to you both and all the kittens. Enjoy, cat lover. Aw. And then we have a graph paper note. Okie dokie, can be read on air. Excellent. Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ, and all the kitties that I keep hiding away uh, in the rocket behind all this stuff. Anyway, there's one more thing in the bag. Let me get the box. Let me get that out. And we'll move this. And I don't know if you'll be able to see the kitties there or not, but at least I made the effort. We're going to need a box for Halloween stuff. Why don't I leave those boxes accessible for a minute? Okay. The holiday industry has decided to bring out the Halloween decor in August, so I jumped on the bandwagon, could not resist sending these items to you and all the kitties. Ocean, Caliper, and Astrolabe and Spyglass are all featured on the blanket. Tell DJ that even Duncan has brought out their signature pumpkin spice lattes already. Maybe she knows and has had one or two by now. So good. Anyway, enjoy decorating for Halloween. With these items, Halloween is the best. Uh, enjoy the holiday, cat lover. P.S. Halloween is on Monday, October 31st this year. Be prepared. All right. Well, I am prepared. I don't mention this very often, and she's going to be uh, embarrassed because she is on the Internet where people that watch uh, me uh, interact with her sometimes. But Halloween has always been a special holiday for me. Even when I'm not celebrating Halloween, I'm celebrating my own mother's birthday. That's right. Uh, so that's always been the day. So uh, I've already described the blanket is giant and it's soft and it's wonderful. And uh, then you also sent some great uh, Halloween tea towels. These are going to look wonderful in the kitchen. Uh, Halloween, more like autumn tea towels, I guess. This one says cozy with my cat and it is a cat wearing a winter sweater or like a fall sweater, I guess, uh, and holding what's clearly a pumpkin spice latte. Uh, there's another tea towel here that says pumpkin spice, I see, with cats wearing scarves and boots because it gets very wet and rainy. Oh, and one wearing a sweater. Oh, and a pumpkin pie. Oh, that's good stuff. All right. Uh, here we have a fall kitchen towels. All right. Oh, this is one. Uh, it's a little, it's a, it's a bat little kitty <laughs> uh, out in the garden with bumblebees and stuff with sort of fall colors. And then we have a whole bunch of garden kitties, yes, out hunting butterflies and things in the fall. That's wonderful. Uh, those are all very pretty towels. And uh, we always have those hanging right back there on the oven. So that will be wonderful. Thank you. Now I think that's everything. I don't see anything else here. I don't think I forgot anything. So, uh, so let me thank all of you again. Thank you guys so much for everything, for taking great care of these cats and kittens. Uh, I, I'm holding up my part um, by making sure that they get all their care, but I need to start going a little beyond that, making sure that we get those blog posts out and now that we bring in the apps, so open up the application process. A reminder to anybody that's, that wants to apply to these kittens, don't do it on the DAWs website, do it on our website. I'll, I'll get it opened up. I'll tell you what, I'm going to, I'm just going to say, I'll open the application process today, whether I can, whether I get the blog post that I desperately want to do or not. Um, so, uh, so that's, there we go. I've, I've, uh, I've pointed out into the, the uh, bleachers. That's where it's going to go. We'll see. Actually not. I, I'm just, I'm saying I'm going to do them. I'm pointing uh, like somewhere between uh, second and third base. No, that's the worst place. You know what? I'm not going to make any more sports analogies. I don't do that. I don't sports. Um, okay. Anyway, there we go. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bunt that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, right. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up. Then we'll wrap up the mailbag, and uh, I will say thank you one more time. Um, so let me take care of that, and I will be back. And maybe we can see some kittens in the rocket. In fact, there's no reason I can't just move it a little closer because they might get up if I do start moving things around. But that's fine too, right?
The thing about assembling the paper, that's not going to stop you from looking at it a little. Whoa, curbing lead foot school bus drivers. Now that's a headline. Curbing. Yeah, I get it. Okay. School buses these days stop at every single house of the kids. Well, like when I, uh, oh boy, another old man story. When I was a kid, though, I, I was bused to school more often than not throughout my life. And uh, the buses did not stop at your house. There was like one place all the kids in the neighborhood would be expected to go to to wait for the school bus. And that was part of the joy of it was, you know, that's how you know and hang out with the kids in your neighborhood. I really enjoyed that. So. Uh, my guess is that's not much of an experience that kids get these days because as I'm driving around, uh, when I get stuck behind a school bus, I see it is stopping at every single house. It, it stops. It seems weird. I mean, I can understand why why a parent would want that. It makes it makes sense. It's just uh, extreme, though. Actually, maybe that's not true everywhere. I do remember when we were in Johnsburg, there were like two or three uh, houses that would, you know, the, but here, uh, yeah, it goes right down the road and hits every single one. Okay, let's see here. Uh, what am I doing? These are for the new mom and this is for Trink. Trink's is pretty clearly labeled, so I can put that anywhere. These, not yet. Uh, so let's get a box out for this. This will say I have the letter over here for some reason. Okay, that can just go down. Right, we got this sorted. Sort. We got it sorted. Sorted. Oh, Christmas stuff. Okay, we do need the box. What's in the box? Okay, we can make this work. Ari, how is it that you choose everything to lay on that I need? Well, I guess eventually I would end up taking all of it anyway, wouldn't I? All right. Oops. 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 Here. There we go. This here. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Hell Stills, thank you so much for helping decorate. Uh, wow. You know, if you're going to send something to help us decorate, send your garden. It is amazing. Uh, I see that garden on uh, on the, the garden uh, channel on our Discord server all the time, and that's some uh, aspirational gardening, I'll tell you that. Okay. So this has to go downstairs, but I don't want to get it confused with anything else. What to do? I need to switch this letter opener for a pen, I think. This goes with Christmas stuff, that's easy. Not easy to spell though. This goes to uh, Cahoots. I need to say her name more often, it's not really stuck in my head yet. Cahoots, 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 Cahoots. Okay, Cahoots. This is sort of general purpose over here. Again. Perfect. 
is perfect. And then this is for Ocean Air. Yes. Spyglass, yes, okay, perfect. Yes, yes. Good. Good. Well, that's excellent. All right, that's all going downstairs. Oh, I have my Halloween things. What? Too much in it. Oh, hang on. I think we got it. Maybe I should fold this blanket instead of just trying to stuff it in here though. Actually folding is gonna make it work much better. All right, folding at home. Here we go. box before it's too late. Perfect. Don't try to get up there, all right. Precarious. Thanks, bud. Really excited to wake up, huh? All right, well, I'm going to end the archive there. I'm going to take this stuff down. And, uh, you know, all the stuff. So, Thank you again so much. You guys are wonderful. I just, I can't now, I think, I think now more than ever, I, I really appreciate all of the help and all of the care. And, uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's heartwarming. It's always been wonderful and heartwarming, but now I think more than ever, um, I, I just, I really appreciate all of you. So thank you so much for, for being uh, a big, the biggest part of, of what makes getting Academy work, you know? For sure, lately the biggest part. Okay, uh, archives. Let's uh, wrap up that recording.